There's a very good reason why I'm currently screaming for my actual life while sailing down this winding strait. That reason being, the cart I'm driving is not your typical rental cart. I'm here at Daytona Tamworth today, and if you're in the know when it comes to the UK rental scene, you already know exactly why I'm here. If you don't, allow me to elucidate you. Your typical petrol rental cart is a four-cylinder cart capable of reaching anywhere between 35 and 40 miles an hour if given enough track to do so. These bad boys, however, are two-cylinder Rotax-powered D-Max carts and can reach speeds within the range of 65 and 70 miles an hour. I'm here for a 20-minute practice today to try and figure these beasts out, and then I'm throwing myself directly into the deep end with a 20-minute sprint race. There's no title card needed for this one, we're going straight into it. Okay, so after I was done screaming for my life, I decided to cross the start-finish line to begin the first lap. Now, if anyone who has been to Daytona Tamworth is watching, you'll know that my lines are terrible, but the whole purpose of this practice session is to get a feel for the actual cart itself. That up ahead of me is Ellis, he's joined me today, but there is absolutely no chance I'm catching him, not when I'm barely in control of the cart that my arse is planted on. Now, this track's layout is rather interesting. Aside from looking like an actual dinosaur, it's a lot of sweeping double apexes and a few hairpins here and there. So the line is actually a lot more complex than I originally predicted it to be, because when I was watching a hot lap of this place, I just assumed, oh, double apex, hairpin, double apex, and I'm getting it horribly wrong, as you can tell by the fact that not one, but two people have just sailed straight through me on that corner there. I do not have a hope in hell of catching up with these guys, especially when I miss the final corner's apex by such a wide margin. But we're now back on the straight where I can open the taps again. Maybe my weight advantage would help me catch up to these guys, but as we enter the second lap, you're supposed to go through this part completely flat, and I just do not have the bravery for that. But that's the first lap, and I am no more in control of this car when I started than I am now. <laughs> In what was very confusing to me in the editing process, an individual with the exact same helmet and race suit comes sailing by me, but that is in fact not Ellis. The giveaway is the fact that he's actually wearing a GoPro on his head. He comes here quite often, he's got the lines down perfectly as you can tell, and my entries and exits are just all over the place, but that's not the point of this practice session right now. The point is, figure out how the car handles and then practice the lines. Because I'm doing my best to follow them, but considering I'm barely in control here, they're just disappearing in front of me. So I need to have a little crash course and learn as much as I can quickly. In case it's not completely obvious just how quickly these carts are, this individual throws it down the inside of me, gets a clean overtake, a clean exit out of the corner, and has already opened up that much distance just with a little bit of track knowledge and control over that cart. These things were unbelievably quick. I barely could comprehend how quick they were for the first few laps of this practice session. And not knowing the lines is leaving me absolutely dead in the water. For example, right here, when someone else gets through me again because I compromised my entry speed into a corner. This was maddening. But hey, we're still only four laps in, plenty of time. Fortunately, one of the small comforts I could take from this was the fact that I was not the slowest man on track, because this right here in front of me is an individual I don't quite know, but I do think I actually get by here. Even though I lift here and they start opening up a gap on me, I decide to do what I do best, throw it down the inside. As soon as I get my nose in, he kind of backs out, leaves me plenty of space to make the move, largely because he knows that having a collision at this speed is not exactly how you want to spend a Sunday. Now, up ahead of me is another individual who I plan to catch and overtake purely to establish my dominance, of which I have none, but all I need to do is try and clean up my lines and see if I can actually make something out of this. I'm eight laps in at this point, and I'm starting to get a feel for the cart. Even though I'm still pretty sloppy, my lines are starting to get tidier and tidier as time goes on. My exit from that corner clearly was not wide enough, but my entry into this corner was pretty good. The apex was a complete failure, and so was the exit. However, my entry through that corner wasn't too terrible, which means this double apex right there doesn't go too terribly. Now, this one I struggled with a lot, but I get the exit just fine because there's plenty of space to exit on the right there. And I have actually gained on this guy in front of me, although I do lose all of that by absolutely missing the final apex like I do every single time I reach it because the breaking point is always slightly earlier than I expect. But the trend is set. 
I'm starting to get a feel for the cart, I'm starting to improve. I am going to jump ahead a bit here though because it does take me a tedious amount of time to catch up to this guy. Now, one lap later, I've clearly gained a considerable amount of ground to this guy, and the saving grace is the fact that we both mess up our entries into this corner here. I do it because I don't know what I'm doing, he's done it because he's clearly made a mistake by the fact he's shaking his head. Now I, the complete twig I am, are completely behind him in this card in his slipstream. However, because I don't have the bravery to go through this part flat out, he starts opening up the gap again. However, he messes up his braking coming into this corner, which means I'm able to actually dummy him and fake to the outside to get the overtake done. Or at least that's what I'm telling you I did, when in reality I got lucky that I didn't rear-end him and he looked the wrong way for me. Call me an unreliable narrator all you like, but that overtake looked as cool as it felt. He is still very much part of the story though, because I'm about to mess up the entry into this corner and leave the biggest door possible wide open for him. But fortunately, because I am an aforementioned twig, I'm able to just shuffle the cart forward, get in front at the apex, and block him out. I don't know why I'm battling in a practice session, but if I was fast enough to catch and overtake, then I ain't exactly gonna say boo to that, now am I? Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, not a whole lot happened in terms of on-track action for the majority of this session after that last overtake, so I'm just gonna walk you through my final lap to see how I'm doing. I'm clearly starting to carry a lot more speed through that final corner as I gain confidence with this cart. My entry into this apex got a little bit later, which means that I'm starting to get a lot faster through that corner. I still am a bit sloppy through that corner there, but I still get the entry into this corner lined up, but I still turn in way too early and then completely botch the exit by not going wide enough. That was the deceptive part about this track, it may all just be sweeping corners, but the entry points seem incredibly vague and seem to change on you if you're not paying any attention, and it's really easy for your mistakes to snowball into more mistakes. The corner I was struggling on I got slightly better in here, but how am I doing in this final hairpin? I get a lot closer to the apex as time, go as wide as I can on the exit as I was told to by the regulars here, and it's kind of impossible to mess up a straight even if it tends to wind a little bit like this one, but still, the lap is a lot cleaner than when I started, and that's the checkered flag to bring an end to the practice session. So I'm now going to pull into the pits and chat with Ellis about how that went. Well on drivers, jump out for me please. Oh my god, in heaven. <sighs> that was confusing. I had that car last time, 150. Yeah. It was last time I drove it. I set a 57.030 as my best apparently. That's good. Is that good? I was not in control of that car. <laughs> exactly what you said how it would happen happened. I came through turn one, I was like, this isn't that. Oh my god! <laughs> so, clearly a massive step up from the four strokes I'm used to. Thankfully, I avoided wetting my race suit during the drive, and as time went on, I started to gain more and more control over the cart, setting a time that a couple people acknowledged as good for your first time here, which is karting shorthand for it's a bit crap, but it'll do. Regardless, I've still got a race ahead of me, but before we have that race, we have a quick little qualifying session, which went well for some, and not so well for others, for instance, dear Ellis here, who has decided to meet his mate Barry R with front-facing enthusiasm. Hi Ellis! Once quali ended though, I was baffled to learn that I'd somehow qualified P6, so I took my place in this loosely arranged cluster of carts ahead of me and prepared for something else I've never experienced in a race before, a rolling start. Oh boy. And the light goes green and let's go racing. Now I get a terrible, terrible start in this race because I completely forgot where the start line was because the start line and the transponder line are two completely different places. I've just activated the position timer and the lap timer where the transponder actually is, but my slow start means that he nearly got through me on the straight, but he gets through me here immediately because he, I just keep leaving doors open, I keep making mistakes, so I'm already down one position within four corners, but that's fine, because that was kind of a blessing in disguise. It's my first race in a D-Max, and it meant that I wasn't caught in that absolutely colossal pack up there, in which I admittedly probably would have caused an accident, let's be honest. Let's see how the rest of the lap goes though, because I'm not exactly falling too far behind these guys, I just keep making the occasional slip up, which means they open up gaps on me. 
Every single mistake you make in a D-Max cart gets shown to you a thousand times over when the people in front of you start disappearing. For example, missing the apex there means that, to be honest, I really start falling back here, but my weight advantage means that I don't exactly fall back as far as I think I'm going to. I almost keep to the back of this guy here, but again, I get a worse entry into this corner. He starts pulling away. I try and go for an inside move here, but he defends it perfectly, causing me to break. And look at that distance open up. And I get a little bit too greedy on the curb here, which means I cannot recover from that. And honestly, I don't think I'm catching him. I leave the door completely wide open coming through this corner here, meaning that guy there almost gets through me. This is just lap two. This has been incredibly hectic so far, but all I need to do is survive. Now, my early race pace issues were quite confusing because again, it feels like I'm gaining on this guy in front of me and I actually try and go for the move again by breaking slightly later than he does. But again, the turning point is not where I think it is. I cause accidental contact, go flying off into the runoff area and the gap opens straight up again. Honestly, the racecraft in a D-Max car is completely different to the four-stroke techniques I'm normally used to. Not wildly different that I can't execute normal moves like dive bombs and switchbacks, but honestly, tiny little details like that mean that I can absolutely ruin my time just with the smallest of mistakes. Two desperate laps of trying to cling onto the back of this guy later, and this guy here has decided to say hello to Ellis's mate, Barry R, bringing out the yellow flag temporarily. And then it goes green because this track actually goes yellow in sections rather than yellow flagging the entire track because some back markers decided to accelerate on their corner exit and plant it directly into the wall. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Lap 7 now, and this is where the race starts getting spicy, because on my inside here, this guy absolutely misjudges the braking and takes me out completely, planting me into the wall and losing me two positions. He is, however, a complete gentleman and lets me straight back through, which I really, really appreciate. That was really sporting of you. But now I need to recover and try and catch the other guy that that just let through. This was a task easier said than done though, because even though I tried this audacious move from this far back, he absolutely covers it off, and honestly, I don't know why I thought that was going to work. Again, I get a bit too greedy on the curb, which means I lose a little bit of traction, but I'm sticking to the back of him so far. That's all I need to do. I need to stay close and find my opportunity. I'm not gonna find my opportunity by scoffing up the entry to every single corner like I'm doing right here. Looking for gaps that don't exist, but trying to apply pressure, hoping that he sees me in the corner of his eye. His back end kicks out here, but I have to go on the defensive because I'm pretty sure the guy in P9 is trying a move right there. But still, I'm sticking to the back of him and that's all I need for now. Lap 9 now, and back markers have come into play already, because that's how quick these carts are. Now, initially, it looks like this back marker is blocking the guy I'm battling off, but he actually breaks early and then just zips straight around the side of him, something which I did not have the brain power to do. I do, however, have slightly more raw pace, so I just throw it straight down the inside here, but the damage has indeed been done. I have been blocked off considerably by that guy, but I'm not really too salty about it because, frankly, I have more raw pace than the guy in front of me. I just need to stop making little mistakes here and there and capitalize on what I can do when I can do it. Now, if commentator me and driver me could have a chat, it would probably end with a slapped face because as we zip past this back marker, I completely ignore my own advice of not making mistakes by absolutely botching up the exit of this corner right here, looking for a move that doesn't exist, allowing P9 to zip straight through and take it from me. He loses his traction coming through that apex of that corner, which means I almost bump into him, which means I have to break. The gap has opened up immensely, but now, hopefully, those two in front of me are going to start battling, slow each other down, and maybe I can make something work from there? I have just been making a dog's breakfast of this since it started. Fortunately, the exact situation I wanted comes to fruition here because the guy in the yellow helmet starts defending against the guy in front of me that I've been chasing this entire time, severely slowing him down coming through the straight, which means I start gaining on him massively. And now that I'm this close and brave enough to actually go through this corner flat out, it means that a move here is absolutely on because he goes quite wide here, but he gets a terrible entry which is sabotaged by the back marker there. This essentially means I can continue piling on the pressure. I'm on his inside here, which becomes the outside, so I switch to the inside as quickly as I can, hold the curb, maybe get a little bit too greedy, risking track limits there, but I managed to find the gap, get straight through, and now I need to catch the guy in the yellow helmet again. So, here goes. 
Later this very same lap, I get a much better entry into this corner than he does, which means because his entry is so botched, I can actually start catching up to him here. I'm in his slipstream, I'm lighter, and we're coming down the winding straight, which means I'm getting closer and closer and closer as the time goes on. Now, right here, I know for certain that I can make a move stick by breaking ever so slightly later than he does and just throwing it around to completely lock him out here. And that's the move done. So now all I need to do is hold this position, which is difficult when he knows what he's doing and I don't. <laughs> now, back markers always add a little bit of spice to every single race, even if it's bad spice. But this guy right here, I gain on exponentially coming through that corner because he's also lifting like I was before. I get straight past him here, but I'm wondering if I can catch the other guy in front of me in the same lap. So I start hugging the curb again, maybe getting a little bit too greedy now that I'm watching this back, but it seems to be working because I'm gaining on this guy. Maybe my lines are a little bit tighter, I go wider on the exit, he sees me, and I'm pretty sure he just lets me straight through there, which is kind of beneficial considering that I am actually racing for position here and the guy behind me is competent and on my tail. Four laps later and my flow state is completely broken by this guy in front of me. Through no fault of his own, he just happened to be there. So I throw it down the inside of this corner, don't get too greedy on the curb this time and seem to carry a bit more speed, but in the running theme of not learning my lessons, I botch the exit of this corner, allowing the guy in the yellow helmet to finally claim his position back in a pretty solid move. I immediately look for a switchback that isn't there and start absolutely botching my lines out of desperation, but I know that I can catch up to this guy again if I just stay consistent and wait for a mistake. My first wasted opportunity comes right here when Yellow Helmet gets held up by another back marker, so he cuts to the inside to try and get past him, but I, for whatever reason, get incredibly greedy on the curb to try and get past Yellow Helmet way too early, losing all of my speed, and he starts disappearing into the distance again. I go way too deep on this corner exit and just watch him go. That is how brutal D-Max racing is. The slightest mistake will have your opponent disappear into the distance or catch you like a net. Now for something slightly amusing that I noticed when I started watching the footage back, this guy in front of me, something comes flying open on his cart while he's racing and it distracts him temporarily but also takes me off guard because I'm thinking, is that thing going to fly off and hit me in the face? He gets a strange exit coming out of that corner, I try and capitalize but again I botch it up. But I am completely fixated on whatever that is that's currently hanging off of his cart. It doesn't get him flagged for a technical though, which is unfortunate, but fortunate at the same time because I'm really enjoying this battle with him. But I am botching every single opportunity I'm given by getting way too greedy with the attempts. So all I need to do now is lock in and look for one last big attempt because we are in the closing stages of the race and I cannot botch this now. We're on the closing stages of the final lap here, and to spice things up, there is a lot of back marker traffic we just caught up to that this guy seems to be weaving through with absolute ease. I get sent a little bit wide by this guy on my inside here, but not too wide that it absolutely ruins me. Now, the guy in the yellow helmet is about to be held up by the guy in front of me, but I am about to make the worst mistake I have made all race. He cuts to the inside looking for a move that isn't there, which slows him down. My opportunity would have been here if I did not completely overcook the entry into this hairpin here. He gets past the back marker, starts disappearing into the distance, and at this point, I can see the guy waving the flag. It's over. Everything came down to that last move, and I completely messed it up, but... Hey, it was a good race. I'll take P8. The guy in front of me was a gentleman. He earned his position through some really solid racing, and this was a really fun time. So I'm going to pull into the pits and then give you my rather poignant closing thoughts. Today was an enlightening experience, to put it simply. I have been karting frequently for well over a year now. I've driven indoors. I've driven outdoors. I've driven petrol carts, I've driven electric carts, I've driven in the wet, both outdoors and indoors somehow, and not a single session I've ever had was anything like driving one of these carts. It's an entirely different ballpark, from their speed to their handling, and it honestly made me feel like a damn rookie all over again. But even in the wake of that, frankly, humbling revelation, it was a special experience, one that I do tend to repeat in the future, just 
not anytime soon because the cost to come here was, by comparison to the usual places I go to, absolutely eye-watering. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. If you notice my voice seems a bit off this time, it's because I also caught that absolutely massive super cold that spawned into existence the moment that August ended. Also, at the time of recording, we are remarkably close to 20,000 subscribers, which is just insane, honestly. I'm planning to do a Q&A live stream on the YouTube channel at some point, so keep your eyes peeled on either the community tab or the notifications in my Discord server to find out when I'm going to do that. So you lot can ask me questions in real time rather than me sifting through a big list across three social media platforms and missing questions that you might want answered. So I hope to see you there. Until next time.